Life Technology, business, multimedia, wellness and health, events, reviews, and more. This is Mary Collins from Life Hacks Media, and I have the absolute pleasure to have Lizzie Dent, author, online with us today. How are you, Lizzie? Oh, I'm pretty good, feeling a bit uh, rough after my first vaccine, but otherwise I'm feeling pretty good. Well, champion for being with me online for this interview today. I really appreciate it. I'm just going to give the audience a little bit of information about you. So Lizzie is actually an author who spent her early 20s in Scotland in the hospitality industry. Um, And I think that's what helped her kind of get creative with her life when it came to authoring. But she also has had the pleasure and privilege to work as a producer, creating content for various TV companies, including MTV, Channel 4, Cartoon Network, the BBC and ITV. You all, she always knew that she wanted to be a writer and now is at a stage where she's not only published, but I believe may have an upcoming TV series as well. So with that, Lizzie, tell us a little bit more about you. Well, that's it, really. I just I spent most, let's say, the last 15 years working in London in TV um, and then I was made redundant, as loads of people are in media all the time. Yeah. <laughs> From a, from a job and um, I just decided to write a book because uh, it was something I'd always wanted to do and I had a, a, a kind of small buffer of money in the bank from the redundancy so my partner was like why don't you just take two months and do that so I did and um, I was absolutely blown away that I was lucky enough to get an agent off the back of that and then a publishing deal so it was really amazing. <laughs> Okay. And do you think, speaking of your past and traveling, um, being quite international in that sense, what what inspired you for for your first book? I mean, what was it that about the book that kind of got you writing, or what was the material? Where did you what did you base your material on? Well, I obviously, so I I'd written I wrote three young adult novels first. Um, Mm -hmm. They didn't really set the world on fire, but they were it it was. It was kind of I explored my time working in music and my passion for music in those three books. And mm-hmm. um, then when I decided it was time to write an adult novel, so to speak, I um, thought I, I was trying to think about things that, you know, that were interesting and that impacted my life. And I remembered, you know, my time in Scotland as being a real sort of world opening up experience for me. I'd arrived in Scotland from New Zealand I you know had never really um done fine dining or I didn't know anything about wine and then I I yeah I rocked up there and this whole sort of gastronomic world opened up to me um so that was the kind of what I drew on for the book I was like okay well how can I turn my story into something sort of much more ridiculous and more comedic and so (laughs) that's how the the story came up so it's it's about a girl who goes to Scotland her name's Birdie she's come from a kind of rough home um She's floundering. She should sort of know what she wants to do with her life, but she doesn't. And she rocks up um, to this job in a hotel in the Highlands as a world-class sommelier, but the problem is that she doesn't know anything about wine. (laughs) And the other problem is that the job was supposed to be for her best friend, Heather, who is, in fact, a sommelier. So it's very funny. There's lots of hijinks and silliness and a little bit of romance and a bit with a deer eating Xanax and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Smarter and live better. Life hacks. Um, in fact, I, I hardly read. I just, I don't know, I gave up reading in my late teens and then I never really read in my 20s. Not much. I mean, one or two books a year maybe. Um, and then, you know, everyone says if you're going to be a writer, you must read. And it's like, and I kept hearing this and I was like, ooh. So I started um reading and then I just really got the bug I mean I from from all that time in TV where storytelling was visual and 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 audio you know audio visual um I um 
it was really amazing to me to go back to the written word and my own imagination um, and I really got I really got into it funnily enough I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks now I l- listen to them in the car when I'm going for a walk when I'm doing housework I just I have more time for audiobooks than I do sitting down and reading a book um, but yeah I, I read a lot more now I love a page turning thriller actually that's probably my favorite genre now (laughs) okay and what life hacks would you say would be your to help you focus um to actually complete chapters you know how do you get started is there a kind of a routine that you tend to go towards yeah so i get up every morning at around five o'clock um i've got two kids so i do that to get ahead of everyone. Sometimes I get up at four o'clock. I have been known to get up at three o'clock too. (laughs) Um, And I go, when the house is quiet, I go downstairs and I sit and I write first thing in the morning and I don't do anything else. I don't check my emails. I don't go online. I don't do Mm. anything. Um, My brain is the most fresh then. It's the most creative. Um, I think there's something about coming straight out of sleep and going straight into one thing and focusing mm-hmm. on it, which makes you really, I mean, I'm not a super organized person, but that's one thing I do do like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so would that be your first life axis? Don't get started on social media, waste book and all the rest of it. Go straight into your healthy routine of writing or preparation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I li- I literally make a coffee and and I go and that's it. And um, I just don't allow myself to get distracted. It's, uh, you know, there's so much information all the time going on in your brain with all this, you know, digital life we lead. And um, I find that if I can come straight out of sleep, and and go straight into one task, I'm the most focused and the most creative, actually. Okay. Um, well, when it comes to the actual getting published side of things, do you think that that helped? Was it did it help that you already had some a foot in, in the industry when it comes to the television side of things, or was it a completely new world uh, when it came to getting published? It, this is a really interesting question, actually, because um, I. I didn't know anything about publishing. Like, as I said, I didn't really read. I didn't understand how books worked. The publishing industry had nothing to do with it. Um, I worked in TV, so I kind of found publishing a bit nerdy and, like, no, it just wasn't something that I knew much about. And um, and then I wrote and I finished the book, the, my very first YA, that period when I was redundant, and I wrote an email to somebody that I'd met at a TV conference called Julian Friedman. And I said, in, in it was a direct message over Twitter. And I said, I knew he had something to do with publishing, but I wasn't sure what it was. And I said, um, you know, I've written this book. <laughs> uh, do you know what I should do? And he emailed me back straight away and he said, send it to me. I'll read it for you. And then I kind of looked into his background and realized he actually owned a literary agency in London. I didn't realize he was the actual owner. (laughs) Awesome. So now the actual, so it did it, did it help me? Yeah, it helped me because I made contacts in publishing that I didn't know that I had. He took me seriously straight away because we'd been at a conference together working on projects. So he knew how I worked and he knew, knew my background. So yeah, you know, I was brand new to publishing, but I had 15 years of contacts and I was able to draw on one of those to get a foot in the door mm-hmm. and then indeed my first book published. Um, but the other thing that I think TV helped me with is that um, a lot of people say that The Summer Job, the, the novel that's out now, has like a real TV feeling to it that I write mm-hmm. in scenes rather than mm-hmm. – and, and I'm and – my my book book moves very quickly and um you know I I do think that that's because screen is my first interest I don't get bogged down in prose and exposition because I'm always moving forward fast in my Mm -hmm. in my books um so really good you know readers that like literature and like beautiful prose and long passages you know then they're, they're never going to find that in my books my books are like all plot driven and character driven and getting from a to b much like a, a film or a, a tv show yeah 
Interesting. So do you think you write in the way that you see? Like, do you imagine, like you said, that do you, do you direct scenes in your brain oh, while totally. you're writing them? Yeah. I don't know if other writers do, but that's totally how I work. Everything is like, okay, I need this to happen in this scene. And then I think, okay, it can't happen in that bedroom because that's visually boring. So where are we going to move it to? <laughs> Let's move it to, you know, the, the queue at a a ferris wheel you know at a, at a fairground like i just i think all the time like what's visually interesting how do i make this more sparky so you know and, and i mean part of that is because i'm not a great uh, you know prose writer <laughs> so i'm always thinking about how i to, think it's descriptive that's it's a wonderful way as you said to keep the imagination involved of the person who's reading it or listening to it on an audio, um, an audio version. Yeah. Uh, will your book be available in audio version as well? Yeah. Yeah. It's out on audible now. So you, you can, you can download it. So audible, Kindle, hardback, paperback in the U S. Excellent. Okay. And when it comes to the publishing world, you were saying, okay, you were completely new to it in many ways. What are some of the things you wish you knew then that you know now and getting published I think one of the things that you can get really caught up in as a writer is believing that there's going to be this like explosion moment when your book comes out and you're going to like race up the charts um or bomb or whatever and mm -hmm. the reality is it's all a lot more nuanced than that there every year there's breakout books that become bestsellers um some of those writers never follow it up with a second book. Some of them go on to have amazing careers. Um, some writers start small and it's their 10th book before they sell it to Netflix and become a household name. So I think that's one of the things about publishing is you can't, everyone's journey is quite different and it's a long game. It's not a short game. It's a long game. So my job is now to write books consistently put them out regularly and build a readership. And I think if you don't know anything about publishing, you think, oh, my book's coming out and I'm going to debut on the Sunday Times and if I don't, my career is over. Like mm. you, you, But it isn't like that at all for 99.9% .9 of full-time working authors. You know, it takes time mm -hmm. connecting with readers, building readerships, yeah. So okay. that's probably the thing. <laughs> like, you have to realize not to necessarily give up or expect too much too soon. Yeah. Why work harder when you can work smarter and live better? Life hacks. You had mentioned that you had had a couple of books previously. Did you find it uh, unusual or were you quite surprised that you were able to not have to have like an entire series? Because I think that's something else that people um, assume that you kind of have to have about 10 books lined up before an agent will actually take a writer. Yeah, no, that's definitely not the case. You need one good manuscript and a compelling um, submission letter. Really, that's that's the key. Um and I, I, you know, I think that's the other thing. You know, my book was preempted the the summer job, which means that when it went out to market, a publisher jumped on it straight away and offered a flat rate for my agent to take it off the market. So that was kind of that was very exciting. But you know, mm -hmm. the purchase price that they pay for that book is not for that book. It's there. It's for your career. So they make a decision like, I want this person on my books I want a, you know a 10 plus year career of books every month and I believe that that she can deliver that so and that's what that's what kind of happens so you you definitely get sold on one book and and any I mean I remember going into my agent with the wires saying you know I'm going to do a series and it's going to be this long and there and in the end I was like why didn't I just stick to one book that I wrote really well and then write another one because they don't care really about a series unless you're doing fantasy or or something that requires it. Most people just want one solid book. Speaking of um, having an agent, is it something that you went through like research to actually find or were you just, was it just the right timing and the right place and references? How does one find a good agent? Well, in my case, it was the direct message that I sent to Julian on Twitter and he said, you know, he'd read my book and then I discovered he was an agent. Um, but he very quickly passed me on to a 
junior agent at the agency and so and I've been with her ever since Hattie Grunwald so my um journey is very untypical mm-hmm. um but everyone says that what you do is you have to research so you have to go on to the literary agent websites you have to read the submission guidelines for each agent find who's looking for your genre so you go on and you find that Sally is looking for um, contemporary romance, uh, you know, set in Europe. And then if that fits your book, then you know that you can submit to her because she's looking for that specific thing. And agents will also list what they don't want. So they'll say, don't send me historical romance, don't send me sci-fi, don't send me whatever. So being really targeted is the best way to do it. So maybe find two or three agents you think are brilliant and then, you know, really tailor your submission to them and then, you know, keep going until you find someone that's interested. How much research goes into the books that you make? I mean, especially the summer job. Was there a lot of research or was it just sort of pulling, pulling ideas and memories? Yeah, there was quite a lot of research. I mean, I, I, um, I had to really scour um, menus of Michelin star restaurants in the area and and wine lists and really understand how people were pairing things because I worked in hospitality but that was 10 years ago and things moved really fast and, you know, what trendy foods there were (laughs) 10 years ago are sort of not trendy anymore, even in the highlands of Scotland. So, um, yeah, I did a lot of food and wine research and I spoke to sommeliers and I spoke to restaurant owners in the area to make sure it was accurate. It was never as accurate as I would have liked because I couldn't travel last year when I was editing the book. Mm. And my plan had always been, you know, if I if if I sold the book, I would get my edits through and I would go and have five days up in the area and, and you know, but uh, that never happened, so I had to do it all via the web. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, and then you have editors. So one of my editors was from that area, so she was able to say, you know, if things felt inaccurate or, or unrealistic. So that really helped as well. But, you know, research is a big part of it, definitely. Okay. And also contracts, right? I mean, you were talking about flat rates and um, the book contracts and, and publishers wanting to sign you up because they believe in your career. Who looks through the contracts for you? Was that kind of um, a difficult process or was it quite, were you used to it oh, being involved in TV? What, that's what you have an agent for. <laughs> so uh, they, okay. they take care of all of that. I don't, I mean, I see everything, but I don't really, I, I mean, I trust them to do what's best for me. Okay, that's a great take because I had another author on and she was self-publishing and then she had a publisher and and went straight from self-publishing to having a publisher with no agent. And so it's good to know, it's good to compare and tell people out there, these are the pros and cons. And one of the definite pros is not having to go through a ton of the contractual paperwork because in theory, that's the agent's job. Well, yeah, I mean, they take a big hefty cut of your pay, but for me it's like they take all that off my plate so I just can turn up and write (laughs) right cool okay all right so now speaking of the summer job it has been released in the U.S. and uh, should be available to everyone internationally online through Kindle and Amazon and we will connect all of our links to lifehacks.com that's with a K and an X on Radio X Um, but tell us a little bit more about what may be on the cards next in regards to your book and more. Oh, um, I presume you're talking about the TV option. Yes. yes. Okay, so, so the book was optioned um, for screen by a big production company in the US. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, we are writing outlines for the pilot. So it's a very slow process and it could fall over at any stage. So there's no guarantees. Right. Um, but that's where we're at at the moment. It's We're outlining the pilot and hopefully – that will move forward but it's so hard to know you know I've worked in TV I know how I know the how many things can can, yeah um, it can be fickle yeah okay and do you have any other projects on the horizon in book form yes my next book I'm working on it now actually so that's another comedy um with a fortune teller and a 
uh, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm working on it at the moment. It's a bit of a mess, so I need to focus. I found it very hard to write last year during the pan the worst of the pandemic, but I'm right. trying to get back in it this year. <laughs> and speaking of which, that I was going to ask you, how did the pandemic affect you? Obviously, it's affected you with being able to go abroad and research. Was there anything else that you found that kind of caused made things better or worse? Oh, it just was terrible for me creatively. I just I, I just floundered for a whole year. I couldn't really focus. I couldn't write. It was hard with the kids at home. I just I couldn't get into a routine. But I can I'm, I'm starting to get back into that now. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a disaster for me. I think I'm not alone though. I know a lot of authors and had a hard time last year writing. Okay, and when you have a slump. Um, whether it be because of the situation of lockdown or writer's block or whatever the case may be, um, what do you do to kind of get through it? Is there anything that you find helps? Um, I, you know, I, I tried a lot of things last year, but in the end it was just a little bit of um, joy and looking forward to the world opening up again that seemed to knock me out of it. I think... I don't really have any specific tips for writer's block. I know there are a lot out there. I think you just have to keep going until mm -hmm. something sparks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most important thing is to not stop writing when you feel like that. It's just to, even if it's for 20 minutes a day, you still have to turn up and, and look at the page. <laughs> okay. And so when, when will this new project uh, book that you're working on, do you think when will it be ready for publication and release? Um, well, it's I need to deliver it this year, so by October. So I need to. <laughs> I, I guess it'll come out <laughs> next year. Okay. And for people who are interested, you can actually look up Lizzie's information. You can go to lizzydent.com. She's at Lizzie Point Dent or Lizzie Dot Dent um, on Instagram, and on all her other information for Facebook, etc., Twitter will also be available on lifehacks.com and on her website. Lizzie, thank you so much. If there's one last top hacks that you'd like to offer our audience and listeners, what would it be? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, if you're interested in writing, the biggest thing is to turn up every day and do some. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Lizzie. It's been an absolute pleasure. And for people, keep your eyes open and look now for the summer job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lifehacks.com. That's with a K and an X on Radio X.